Gabi Braun and Nina Einstein are two of maybe the most hated characters in anime history. But who's worse? The answer to this question lies in analyzing the characters based on three key criteria. Why are they hated? Whether these reasons are justified? And what are their redeeming qualities? Starting with the big one, they are both extremely racist. Gabi is a self-hating Eldian who strongly believes there are good and bad Eldians. In her view, those residing on Paradise Island are evil devils, while everyone else are good Eldians. This false dichotomy is the driving force behind most of her actions, one of which is her goal to become a warrior of Marley and inherit the Armored Titan. As a warrior, she would help Marley wipe out the devils on Paradise Island, thereby showcasing to the world that the Eldians beyond the island are the embodiment of good Eldians. It would also raise her status to an honorary Marleyan. Well, that sounds awfully familiar. In the meantime, Gabi, just like her people, have to wear an armband so everyone knows they are Eldians. Even on Paradise Island, Gabi adamantly refused to remove her armband, seeing it as a symbol that proves she is a good Eldian. She views those on Paradise Island as subhuman beings, celebrating their deaths and living in constant fear when in their presence. Such intense hatred even hindered her ability to savor a meal with Sasha's family despite their warm and generous hospitality. And then there's stuff like this. <laughs> From the outset, Gabi consistently disregards alternative viewpoints as evident in her reactions when Falco recounted Reiner's experience on the island and during her argument with Kia. It's not surprising that many found it difficult to tolerate her behavior. Next there's Nina, who doesn't harbor the same intense animosity towards the Elevens as Gabi does with the Eldians. Unlike Gabi, Nina doesn't want to kill the Elevens. Instead, she views them as inferior and genuinely fears them. Nina is a shy girl compared to Gabi, who's quite the opposite. So she mainly vocalized her racist beliefs without acting on them, particularly in Season 1. Here are some examples. She objected to Lelouch's friendship with Zaku simply because he's an Eleven and never engaged in a conversation with him after he joined the student council. During her time as a hostage at Lake Kawaguchi, she referred to the JLF members as Elevens. Nina wasn't pleased when Zaku became Yuffie's knight and initially didn't support her announcement regarding the Special Administrative Zone of Japan. Moving on to Season 2, where Nina gained the confidence to openly express her prejudiced views to both Suzaku and Colin. She was triggered when both defended Zero, which makes me wonder if her hatred for the Elevens was due to their connection to Zero. She hated Zero for killing UV, and since he was fighting to free Japan, everyone in her eyes that supported him is just an Eleven. They are preventing Nina from avenging her goddess, Euphemia. Regardless, one thing remains evident. She still employed the term Eleven as a means to dehumanize people. There's also this messed up part where Nina entrusted the flight to Suzaku, where she says, Suzaku, you don't consider yourself an Eleven anymore, right? Nina equated Elevens as subhumans justifying their deaths while also making sure that Suzaku doesn't see himself as these people. Later on during the Battle of Tokyo 2, Nina encourages Suzaku to fire the Flea and kill Zero. Nina again justifies her hatred for the Elevens by associating them with Zero, the actual person she hates. Now that you understand how these characters are racist, it's time to discuss why they are racist. Simply put, it's a result of the environments that they grew up in. From the government to her family, everyone brainwashed Gabi that the Eldians on Paradise Island were devils. They constantly reinforced this idea of good versus bad Eldians, emphasizing that the children must bear the sins of their ancestors. The brainwashing was so effective that it became second nature for Gabi to hate the Eldians on Paradise Island. Nina's situation is undeniably more complex, as it's never explicitly stated why she's racist, but there are some theories. Hailing from Britannia, a nation known for promoting bigotry, Britannia's Emperor Charles Z. Britannia and even Cornelia, the Viceroy of Area 11, conveyed such beliefs. All men are not created equal. Inequality is not wrong. Equality is! Discrimination against the numbers is our national policy. Then it's time I tried to change that. 
Nina lived in Japan, which Britannia had renamed Area 11 following its conquest, where Japanese citizens were denied the same rights as Britannians. It becomes apparent that Nina likely internalized Britannia's discriminatory policies, which forms the basis of my theory regarding her racist beliefs towards the Elevens. I have two pieces of evidence to back up this claim. The first occurs after Yuffie announced the Special Administrative Zone of Japan. There was a scene where Nina decided to support Yuffie's plan to help the Japanese. If the Special Administrative Zone of Japan's massacre hadn't occurred, Nina probably would have stopped hitting the Elevens. This tragic event, compounded by Lelouch's role in Yuffie's death, only made things worse. Further evidence supporting this theory can be found in the fact that once Emperor Lelouch liberated the other areas, Nina ceased discussing the Elevens as they effectively ceased to exist in that context. Besides this explanation, Nina's racist attitude could have originated from having low self-esteem and self-loathing, which can lead to negative feelings towards others. I also think she hated the Elevens through Zero after he killed Euphemia. There's also a theory that the Elevens attacked Nina in the past, which explains her fear. I don't think that's true, but if it were, that would explain her actions in Stage 8 and throughout the series. So I'm not convinced it was just pure hatred for the other that motivated Nina's racism, unlike other people in Kogias. So do any of the reasons justify Gabi or Nina's racism? Well, yes and no. In Gabi's case, her beliefs seem entirely justified until she stays with Sasha's family. The aliens and Marley consistently propagated these terrible ideas, effectively shielding Gabi from any counter-arguments. While some individuals might have independently sensed that something was wrong, it's important to remember that Gabi is just a child and children are particularly susceptible to manipulation. She was undoubtedly a victim of groupthink and collective brainwashing. However, the turning point occurred when the Eldians on Paradise Island showed her kindness, making it increasingly difficult to uphold her racist beliefs. The initial seeds of cognitive dissonance were sown when Gabi struggled to accept that Reiner didn't view them as devils, a pivotal conversation that occurred between her and Falco before boarding the airship. Despite this, Gabi held on to these racist beliefs during her time on Paradise Island, even though deep down she she knew they weren't true. It's worth noting that Falco managed to break free from the brainwashing much faster than Gabi, leaving little excuse for why Gabi didn't follow suit. She consciously chose to ignore the truth, refusing to acknowledge that these so-called devils were nothing more than ordinary people like herself. Nina doesn't quite get the same pass because there were Britannians in Japan who didn't hold racist views towards the Elevens, including several members of the student council who were Nina's friends. Even after Shirley and Millie treated Zaku with kindness, Nina's opinions remain unchanged. I would agree that the incident at Lake Kawaguchi probably didn't help matters, but that doesn't justify hating all Elevens, especially when people like Euphemia, a woman Nina greatly admired, wanted to help them. It only took until the announcement of the Special Administrative Zone of Japan for Nina to even consider Yuffie's perspective, but she could have started to change after Suzaku became Yuffie's knight. If the only individuals in Nina's life adhered to Charles' view, it might have been easier to justify her racist beliefs. But since the beginning, Nina was exposed to counterexamples, including friends who didn't harbor hatred towards Elevens and people like Suzaku who clearly deviated from the stereotypical Eleven behavior, whatever the hell that means. I also understand that she's angry at Zero for killing Euphemia, but that doesn't justify her hatred for the Elevens, many of whom supported Yuffie's plan for the Special Administrative Zone of Japan. It's also worth mentioning that Nina never explicitly stated that she no longer held animosity towards the Elevens, unlike Gabi who made her stance clear regarding the Eldians on Paradise Island. It might have been implied, but I'll get to that later. For now, let's focus on the primary actions that caused both characters to become despised by their respective fan bases. Starting with Gabi, her first act was killing Lobov to gain access to the Eldian airship. She then took the life of Sasha once she boarded the airship and later on killed a soldier from the Mideast Alliance to facilitate her escape from jail. Moreover, Gabi has the tendency to scream at others and her first instinct is to resort to violence when she perceives a potential threat. Of all the people she killed, Sasha's death held the most significant impact on the main characters and the audience. It was one thing to 
to kill Sasha, but then Gabi had to gloat about it once in the airship and once again to Niccolo. She didn't even realize from his body language that Sasha's death upset him greatly. This is definitely why so many hate this character, and justifiably so. Gabi also bored the airship so she could take revenge on Eren, who killed Zofia and Udo. While Gabi's actions are indeed quite horrific, they pill in comparison to the scale of Nina's war crimes. Nina's actions are undeniably troubling, especially considering her role in creating the Flea Warhead, a weapon of mass destruction. When Suzaku fired the Flea at the Tokyo settlement, it resulted in the tragic loss of lives, including Asahina, Alicia, and a staggering 25 million individuals. Additionally, Nina possesses a crazy side to her personality, which tends to manifest itself during times of stress. Her frenzied expressions rival even Gabi's. She unleashed this monster on Millie and Colin in the same episode, but what fans find most infuriating is what she did to poor Table Coon. This incident has spawned a meme that continues to circulate to this day, even though I still don't understand why this upsets so many people, but obviously it did. This brings us to the following question, are the horrible actions of these characters justified? In the case of Gabi, I would argue that many of her actions can be seen as justified even though Sasha was an unfortunate victim. To truly grasp her perspective, consider this. Gabi was systematically brainwashed to believe that the Eldians on the island were devils and that all Eldians must bear the sins of their ancestors. She underwent rigorous military training to prepare herself to combat against them. Then the Eldians from Paradise Island launched an attack killing many of her friends and destroying her home, reinforcing these deeply ingrained beliefs. It's only natural she would want to seek vengeance in light of these traumatic events. I recently came across an interesting observation that described Gabi as a reverse Eren. This comparison makes sense not only because of their physical resemblance, but also because both characters seek revenge against those who destroyed their homes when they were young. It becomes challenging to condemn Gabi while simultaneously sympathizing with Eren considering their parallel quest for vengeance. However, it's important to note that this perspective applies primarily to Gabi's actions before she spent time with Sasha's family. After that point, her quick temper and propensity for violence become less justifiable, especially when there isn't a genuine threat. While initially understandable, at some point Gabi needed to realize that they were never going to kill her. Nina's actions can also be seen as somewhat justifiable. Schneisel manipulated her into creating the Flea under the false premise that it was a means to honor Yuffie's memory. If you're interested in more detailed analysis, I covered it in this video. Considering that Zero had killed the most important person in her life, it's understandable that she would want to seek revenge. Lelouch felt the same way after Rollo killed Shirley. Just like Eren and Gabi, you can't sympathize with one while condemning the other. Nina's focus remains solely on Zero, which is why she didn't fully grasp the theoretical implications of the Flea until Suzaku fired it. Regarding the table incident, I've always viewed it as more inconsiderate than outright reprehensible, akin to when someone pops the champagne bottle in your bathroom and doesn't clean up after themselves. My main issue with the table scene is why Nina couldn't have waited until she got home knowing that everyone uses that table. Nonetheless, hating her for this is just bizarre to me. Speaking of bizarre, Nina's frantic behavior can, for the most part, be justified based on what we know about her. Nina is clearly mentally unstable in the series and needs help. Her reactions to these events, including Euphemia's death, using the proto Flea, seeing Zero on television all make sense. I can see people not getting behind her reaction to seeing the Flea's destruction firsthand, but it's fine in my book and once again I covered it in this video. Now even though there's an argument for justifying her reactions, you can't use that same argument for when she goes off on others. Her outburst directed at Colin and Millie was not justified, even if her take on Millie was based. Millie was clearly trying to help her, and Colin's role in protecting Zero had nothing to do with Euphemia. This is a case where Nina should have gotten help to deal with her problems instead of projecting those feelings onto others. To be fair, this is also somewhat Schneisel's fault. 
In an intriguing twist, both characters' actions can be argued to have some justifiability. However, this doesn't necessarily make them right, but it does add a layer of complexity to their situations that may challenge your initial perceptions. Before delving into the redeeming aspects of these characters, let's touch on some additional reasons why some people don't like Gabi or Nina. Starting with Gabi, she often comes across as a conceited and self-absorbed individual. She views herself as perfect while degrading others. Gabi was also annoying when it came to discussing how she is the best candidate to inherit the armor titan. As for Nina, she's ugly, lacks self-confidence, and became obsessively attached to Euphemia after just one meeting. And the most important thing, Gabi opposed Eren and Nina opposed Lelouch. It's important to note that these factors weren't taken into account in my final assessment, but I wanted to mention them for the sake of completeness. Now let's explore their redeeming qualities. Gabi's redemption story became evident when she courageously saved Kia and Sasha's family from a titan threat. This act held a special significance for Kia, reminiscent of the time when Sasha had rescued her. Gabi finally came to the realization that there were no devils and Reiner had been right all along. She even went further and called herself a devil. I love the part where she boldly tore off Falco's armband, signifying her shift from a black and white perspective to a more nuanced understanding of the world. Gabi also aided everyone in killing Eren, and without her, they would have never stopped the rumbling. Gabi's redemption story is truly remarkable, as she acknowledges her past mistakes and actively seeks to aid those she had once harmed. It's remarkable how much she grew as a character. She's also quite brave for someone so young, whether she's confronting the Eldian, fighting to save Falco, or working to stop Eren. Gabi can be adorable at times, like when she shared a heartwarming hug with Kia, or displayed an endearing enthusiasm, even if it wasn't always directed towards the right causes. Many consider Gabi to be the best written character in Attack on Titan, and now you know why. Now let's talk about Nina. Her journey towards redemption began when she made the pivotal choice to leave Schneisel's side and collaborate with Lelouch to develop a countermeasure against the Flea, despite her prior animosity towards him. This means a lot when you consider Nina's actions prior to this point. It showed significant growth in her character. Without Nina's contribution, the Zero Requiem would have failed, allowing Schneisel to rule the world under the threat of the Fleas. Much like Gabi, Nina actively worked to rectify her past wrongs, including that she might not hold any racist views of the Japanese people. In fact, there is a belief among many that Nina ceased being racist towards the Japanese by the end of the series, symbolized by her attendance at Ogi and Valletta's wedding, a union between a pure-blooded Britannian and a Japanese man. However, the only way to confirm this is for Nina to explain stated, as Gabi did when it came to her feelings about the Eldians. If it's true that Nina's primary reason for her racist beliefs were due to Britannian policy, then with the liberation of the numbers, Nina would have no inherent reason to harbor animosity towards the Elevens any longer. The key takeaway is that Nina underwent a complete transformation, benefiting not only herself, but also those around her. She appears happier and more confident in Lush of the Resurrection, an often overlooked aspect of that film is her newfound ability to pilot a nightmare frame. Additionally, Nina was quite brave, like when she saved Rivals or helped Lelouch create the flag countermeasure, even though there was a chance that Schneisel would kill all of them. She's super smart, and with the right person like Lloyd, we can see a more fun side to her. Sometimes her shyness can be adorable, and I like her deep friendship with Millie. Just like Gabi, Nina also had one of the best character arcs in her respective series. Considering all of this, how do you even determine who's the worst character? Well, I personally believe that both characters may not be as bad as many people assumed. But since I did post the question, let me answer it. Let's examine their actions. In terms of the damage caused, Nina's Flea objectively did more damage than Gabi's three killings. Now, Gabi could have caused more damage if she had the ability to do so, but she didn't. It's worth noting that the advanced technology and Code Geass allow Nina to cause more destruction than Gabi could in Attack on Titan, aside from the rumbling, which Gabi would have never used. It's also worth noting that Nina never actively used the Flea, where Gabi actively killed people. 
On the flip side, Mina also played a role in saving more lives than Gabi, and even that is debatable since Gabi did help out in stopping Eren. So it's difficult to just state, well, Mina killed more people and therefore is worse. It's not an argument without merit, but I decided to not use it here. Ultimately, my decision was based on two things. Gabi had more legitimate reasons to be racist, and Gabi's redemption had more depth to it, where she both made up for her actions and apologized for her terrible behavior. Nina's redemption arc mainly involved helping Lelouch with the flag countermeasure. While it could have been implied, we don't see Nina on screen recognize and apologize for her past behavior, which leaves the door open to something that shouldn't be ambiguous. So as much as I may dislike Gabi more and acknowledge that she was a bigger racist, objectively Nina is the worst of the two. Let me know your thoughts on this topic and expect another one of these comparisons to come out soon where I will answer one of the most debated topics in the anime community in the past two years. Until then, check out my video comparing the intelligence of Light and Lelouch.